Hey there, I'm Jason with Enphase Energy, and today we're on a site that we recently did a grid tied storage installation with Northern Pacific Power. Hopefully you saw that video, and if not, I'm gonna put it right up here in the description or in the link, and so you guys can go check that out as well for what we did on the first visit. But now we're doing a follow-up. Now that we're releasing the Enphase IQEV charger, we're on site and we're gonna upgrade the charger that was existing, the juice box, now to the Enphase charger. Now this is gonna benefit the homeowner in the, in the sense that when the solar is producing and the loads are uh, not using all the power, the battery's full, the, the EV will be able to take all that extra power and charge the car. So they're actually able to keep more of that power on site versus exporting it to the utility company where they now with NEM 3.0 have a lower uh, feed-in rate and it's just a better ROI and a better investment for the customer. So uh, there's a few different modes which we'll talk about in another video, but we're gonna start with installation of taking off this existing unit which is going to be a hardwired installation and we have the Enphase IQ EV Charger 40 also a hardwired and we're just going to have an easy replacement and then we're going to show you some of the other requirements with the in the in phase products as far as what's needed to make this work with the gateway the consumption cts and how it all works so let's get started <music> Okay, so one of the other things we really want to talk about with adding the EV and having an integrated installation where your EV will be able to charge uh, utilizing your excess solar production is that it does require the consumption CTs to be installed. So that's going to require either a Envoy S metered or IQ gateway to be utilized. Um, previous versions of the Envoy, the Envoy R or Envoys basically, let's just say any Envoy that doesn't have a consumption CT is not going to have the ability to see the loads and so it's not going to be able to utilize the solar in self-consumption mode to offset that EV. So one of those requirements that we talk about are, are the addition of the consumption CTs, which we'll look at those, but those can be in, in kind of two different varying places, right? Those could be, uh, depending on your configuration, they could be at your main panel, they might be at a sub panel, but the requirement is that those consumption CTs capture the EV load behind them, right? Because a consumption CT effectively cannot, um, cannot if it can't see it, the solar can't offset it. That's the easy way to look at it. Let's look at these CTs. Okay, so we can see right here that this is the utility input to the main breaker and we can see that we have a red CT right here which is going to illustrate our L2 and tucked up back up underneath there is going to be our L1 CT so that we can watch both of our phases. Now this configuration is a whole home monitoring solution or situation to where it's watching all of the loads, not just individual ones. So one of the exciting things about this system is it has solar battery storage and the EV charger installed. So we can see here we have our gateway, which is going to, this is a unique situation where this is actually has both the solar and the storage all connected to it um, because it, it is uh, underneath the 80 amps um, and it is fed uh, into the main panel. So this is just a very fast and easy connection. Um, but what happens here is we have the gateway inside of this that is connected to those consumption CTs and this is monitoring and communicating with all of the devices within the eco structure. So we have the, the IQ EV charger now that's in the garage and that is communicating through the, to the gateway through the cloud which is helping coordinate the charging uh, with any available excess solar that, that's available. 
Okay, so we can see inside the combiner for this location, which is again, this is a grid tied storage system. We can see that we have our PV solar breaker, our battery breaker, this is a breaker that's actually feeding a surge protector that's down below, and then we have our gateway breaker. So we're able to, with this grid tie solar installation, connect all of the distributed resources, which is our solar and our storage, in this panel, and then our gateway is communicating with our EV charger to basically make this whole ecostructure communicate. charging. 